gentlemen, welcome to the regular scheduled meeting of the City of Griffin Board of Commissioners, February 14, 2014. We begin with the Pledge of Allegiance led by Commissioner McLemore, followed by me with the invocation. Please join me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of Please join me in prayer. Father, we're here today to ask for your blessing and guidance in the performance of our duties as elected officials. We pray for strength, love, knowledge, and understanding. Help us to recognize and solve the problems that are presented. Make our solutions fair and just in the best interest of everyone. Help us to overcome our shortcomings and keep us united as a team to work for the betterment of the city and its people. We pray in your name. Amen. Amen. Yes, please. You've got the agenda. Do we have a motion to approve the agenda tonight? I shall move. We have a motion. Uh, are we going to have amendments for Ryan to go into the quotation? We'll come up. I'd like to address that once you get to that. All right. So I move that we approve the agenda. We have a motion by Joanne. Second. Second by Ryan. All in favor? Second by raising your hand. <coughs> Seven zero. Thank you very much. <coughs> All right, first item of business is presentation and delegation, um, delegations. First item is to recognize Johnny Stevens, Office Administrator for the Solid Waste Department, who retires on January 31, 2015, after 12 and a half years of dedicated service to the City of Griffin. Human Resources Director in the House Medal of the Drug. Or Bill Francis. Yeah, I'm Welcome. a lot handsomer than mine. Most of the time. <laughs> 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 Miles made the agenda item. Uh, but uh, anyway, gotcha. you, uh, Johnny, you want me to come to you, or can you come on up? Bittersweet, it really is. Um, seems like I'm up here. I'm up here more and more with uh, bad news, I guess, for me, anyhow. But uh, I'd like to... Uh, present uh, Johnny Stevens. She's been my right hand for many, many years. Uh, she's probably thinking more years than she wants to, but uh, we're going to miss her with I am, I know for sure, because um, we had to take a, a whole bunch of stuff and pull it all together, and we did a really good job, and, uh, and for that, uh, I thank you personally. Uh, the city is losing a, uh, a, an asset that can't be replaced. Uh, but you know that you are always welcome because you know, we love you and we miss you and we're going to wish you well in the, in the future. And uh, if there's anything else that we can do for you, you know where we're at. All you got to do is pick up the phone. Okay? Georgia as for the Boys Clubs of Metro Atlanta. I worked with Clayton County Clerk of Superior Court. I was a, a Head Start reviewer that I reviewed throughout the United States. It was only one site that I closed down and that was in my hometown. <laughs> Bittersweet. But I would like to thank all of you allowing me to work here. It's, a, it's been a rewarding experience to work with the city of Griffin. Thank you. Miss Johnny, I want to thank you personally, your relationship with our business and just the way you've dealt with citizens over the years. I hear nothing but, I've always heard nothing but praise about thank the way you. you're so kind. Thank you. And just a very professional woman. Thank you. I could echo that. Yeah. I, every time I've had to call to talk to Phil or, uh, and I've gotten you on the phone, it's been wonderful. Thank you. You're already missed, I can promise you. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you think? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, definitely. But we're gonna we're, we're gonna we're gonna carry on, but always know that, that I can call you.
Thank you, Phil. Thank you, Ms. Jones. Moving on to citizen comments. At this time, Chairperson opens the floor for comments from the audience. Comments should be related to a specific agenda item not listed on the agenda for a public hearing or to concern within the jurisdiction of the city. Commission meetings serve the purpose of conducting city business and are not a forum for the unlimited expression of opinion. The Chairperson reserves the right to limit comments to matters germane to city business and may refer speakers to the city manager or staff for resolution. <coughs> With that being said, is there anybody on my left that would like to address the city commission? Mr. Hammond, you go ahead if you've got something. You can please give your name and address for the record. My name is Daniel Hamm. I am uh, active with the Veterans of Foreign Wars in Griffin, Georgia, have been for several years, and I come to speak in favor of the de-annexation that is required uh, for the uh, property, 30 acres to be uh, annexed into the county. And so the uh, proposed facility there will qualify for uh, grant funding from the U.S. Department of Agriculture. Uh, Mr. Hamm, I don't mean to cut you short, but you'll have that opportunity to speak on item three, the public hearing section. Okay. Perfect. Very good. I didn't. No, no you're fine. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Is there anybody else on the left that would like to come before the commission on a matter that's not being addressed? Is there anybody on my right? That being said, we'll move on to the public hearing. Public hearings were conducted to allow public comment on specifically advertised issues such as rezoning, ordinances, policy development, operating budgets, and other legislative action to be considered by the city commission. Second item on the agenda is received comments regarding the request for variance for section 1211I build, billboard sign, belt property, and the Sea River and Unified Development Code to reduce the front and yard setback from 75 feet to 45 feet, and on the side yard setbacks from 75 feet to 10 feet for the purpose of billboard sign 1108 Vivian Road, submitted by Southern Digital Display to site current director of planning and development services will address. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Uh, the applicant's southern digital displays uh, is requesting a variance to reduce the front yard setbacks uh, for a proposed uh, billboard sign. Uh, the applicant is seeking to reduce the front yard setbacks from 75 feet to 45 feet and the side yard setbacks from 75 feet to 10 feet. Uh, if you would, there should be uh, an Exhibit B uh, we can look at. Um, on Exhibit B, uh, site number one is the approved location. So if nothing happens tonight, they still can put the sign in uh, the first location. What they're asking to do is to relocate the sign to site number two on Exhibit B. Well, they don't automatically have a right to have a billboard. Well, uh, yes, ma'am. It's zoned PCD, and it is a permitted use by right under our ordinance. So the billboard, for, I mean, it, it, it fits the requirements according to our ordinance. Yes, ma'am. May I address that? Please. Uh, unfortunately, over the years at the airport sitting there, uh, we have not protected the runway protection zones and the land there. And in a perfect world, there wouldn't be allowed there, but through a failure y many years ago to uh, put in such prohibitions, uh, they're permitted. So. Well, but only if we approve the very. No, ma'am. They, they get the billboard, they just can't move it over to where they want it without Correct. variance. Correct. Uh, they've gone through the FAA and gotten approval for the existing location site number one. Uh, so it is a permitted use for right, unfortunately. Yes, it is. Which is this, unfortunate. This is not in accordance with our sign ordinance or anything like that. I mean, billboards are something that we've always had quite a bit of discussion over. And I saw the, the thing that it was coming up. And I don't like uh, some people from Hillendale last Thursday night, but then uh, I mistakenly thought it had to go through planning and zoning first. And then Mrs. Smith told me, no, that it didn't. Uh, I think that uh, we have enough eyesores in that area that we don't need a good deal there. I, I would well, the You're telling me that if we don't vote for the variance, they can come in and put it where they wanted to originally? 
Yes, and ma'am. we can't say anything about it? No, ma'am. That's, that's just not a good ordinance. <laughs> I agree with you. Does the board have any questions or comments? Well, I think Mr. Uh, well, Mr. Moore will make because I'm going to make some comments here. Well, let me, let me finish this here for a second, too. So basically, uh, after we did our review, um, we found there was no hardship to move from site one to site two until staff is recommended denial of the, of the application. For the, for the variance, yes. So that means that we go back and put it closer to the road? No, ma'am. <coughs> if, if you look at the Exhibit B, yeah. right, right now it meets all the requirements, the 75 foot setbacks from the parking lot, it meets all that. But if we uh, uh, approve the variance, they can reduce it and make it closer to the entrance of uh, uh, the Rosen's parking lot. Is this a public hearing? Are there any comments from the audience at this time? Uh, was it up here? Do you have a copy of the exhibit that you possibly have? I had a copy, but it didn't it didn't yeah. I've got uh, it. not Um, my name is Robert Mole. I'm the airport director, 1035 South Hill Street. Uh, oh, what happened? Anyway, um, it is true that they went to the FAA and got a determination of no hazard to air navigation, but I believe that is with respect to the height. And unfortunately in this situation, as we don't have navigation e easements or we don't own the RPZ in Fee Simple, uh, all we have to rely on are the local ordinances. Um, and there is a Spalding County Airport overlay in which it says in section 2206, I won't go through the whole thing, but uh, cannot interfere with navigational signals, radio communications, make it difficult for pilots to distinguish between airport lights and others. Uh, if you look at that, I just want you to keep that in mind, but if you look at the graphic up there, the far right star is, I believe, where the original location is. What the variant says is they want to move it to the uh, star there near the center, which is almost on the center line of the runway. And I believe, uh, I'm, not, I'm not for sure, but I believe it is a digital billboard. It's a lighted sign. Mm -hmm. And so it's going to have changing graphics. And so that would cause a distraction to pilots. And uh, unfortunately, we can't prohibit anything in the RPZ the way it is now, but I'm asking that that be deemed a a hazard to the pilots and the crews that operate in and out of the airport. Would it be possible to uh, table this until this can be studied? It is the Griffin Spalding Airport. It, it is also, I would assume, it may be a subject to Spalding County regulations. But no. this really, to me, maybe it was a negligence on my part. I don't really think so, but I did not think it was coming up tonight. And I told people who were interested in it that it wasn't. And I wasn't able to get in touch with everybody. Uh, I, my objection, of course, is it's a busy place already. You've got street lights, you've got traffic lights, you've got traffic even when the planes are coming over to land over the traffic lights. You're sitting there and it still bothers you. Uh, I think this needs more study. And if, this, if what Robert is saying is true, then I think we need to take that into consideration. Um. I address that? Yes, yeah. I've agonized over this because even though there's a finding of no hardship, uh, we always give folks a fair hearing. To, that's what we're here for. To, and I've agonized over this, but when I looked into this and Robert and I talked about it, to move it from off the right side of the airport, the runway, to right in the middle of the runway, a lighted sign with changeable copy, to me just begs to create a uh, navigation hazard taken off right over the, there. So I've determined that I'm going to vote against the variance and not let them move it in front of the runway. Y'all free to do what you want, but I'm going to go with our airport director and, and what he thinks and 
as a pilot, I think it's, it's bad enough off to the right. It's even worse right in the middle. Is there a public hearing? Is anybody on the left like to come before us to speak, comment? If you'll please state your name and address for the record. Yes, Terry Anderson. Um, I'm at the airport as my business, uh, which is 1035 South Hill Street. But as someone who teaches people to fly to our airport, the limits that we're able to fly down to is one mile visibility and somewhere you know between 200 and 400 feet above the ground. That doesn't give us much at that point where the sign is. We're going to be within 100 feet of that sign coming across in low visibility with a you know, if it was just a plain sign, that'd be one thing. But with it lighted and changing colors, like you saw the weather out there today, you know, in a haze, that light's going to light up the sky, too. You know, put that together with coming in at night. I think it's going to be dangerous in either of the positions. And I don't know how you fix the second one, but certainly don't let it come right over the runway. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. Additionally, if, if you want to look at it, I have some night photos as well. <coughs> Anybody else on the floor? Sign dimensions. 10 by 20 or 10 by 30? 10 by 30. I think that's the outcome. This, and just make sure we're clear, you're voting to, in the variance to relocate the sign. Right, yes, sir. No, okay. okay. All right. Is there anybody else on the left that would like to come to the commission? The applicant or anybody on the right? Y'all like Anybody like to make any comments? Any other questions or comments? Okay. Moving on to item three, receive comments regarding request for de-annexation of property approximately 30 plus or minus acres located on Williamson Road. Just west of South Pine Hill Road to include property known as tax parcel number 054 block 01 lot 001 submitted by Bankston Properties LLC, Tucson Current Director of PMD Services Board address. Yes, sir. Uh, in order to qualify for the USDA uh, grant that was mentioned earlier, uh, the property needs to be considered rural uh, to meet the grant qualification restrictions. So uh, the city unfortunately exceeds those uh, restrictions. Uh, so to make it viable, the deannexation is, is a necessity. So uh, staff recommends the approval of the deannexation. This is a public hearing. Does the commission have any questions? I do. Yes, yes sir. That I don't know. Uh, the it's county would need to. Uh, it's a residential zone because okay. that extends the same time subdivision system. I'm sure. That would be right behind that uh, convenience store. Uh, yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. yeah. Attached to Powers Court. Yeah. Well, it's, it's actually further west. Yes, it's actually well, the, the westernmost portion in the city along the yeah. mm -hmm. road. Okay. So it is valid to whatever the zone is right around it. It, it, it basically is, is, is between our court subdivision phase one, I think it was, right. and Oakland Grove Road, where the subdivision is still there. And it'll go to a, back to a residential, if I'm not mistaken, it was residential. So they'll be the one to do the zoning okay. consultation. Commissioner, any other questions? This is a public hearing at this time. Mr. Ham, you are more than welcome to come forward if you'd like to address the commission. Thank you for your understanding. Name and address for the record, please. Thanks, Chairman. Daniel Ham, uh, member of Veterans of Foreign Wars, host 5448 here in Griffin. And uh, this is a project that has been uh, being planned for, I think, well over a year. And uh, in order for it to get moving, the uh, de-annexation of the property is required. Uh, so they will qualify for a grant from the uh, uh, Department of Agriculture. And I'd like to tell you a little bit about the facility that's being planned there, if I may. Uh, this is a uh, facility for female veterans. 
currently there are over 80,000 female veterans in Georgia. Only California, Texas, and Virginia are home to a larger population of female veterans. Many of the female veterans returning home are unable to adjust and end up homeless, in prison, or on the street as prostitutes. Uh, the uh, female veteran count in October of 2010 was uh, 184,380 in the United States. Uh, right now there's well over 2 million female veterans in the U.S. Women compose 15% of the, our uh, homecoming U.S. troops and 15% of the U.S. Uh, Army, Air Force, uh, branches of service, and uh, many Americans are insecure about how to accept or view them. The Atlanta VA facility offers uh, several facilities, but the facilities at the Atlanta VA Center were designed for male, uh, for the men returning home. They are not equipped or trained presently to proper handle the female veteran population and the problems they have. They are working on it. They're doing a lot of training and a lot of facilities, but uh, this facility would be dedicated to uh, uh, the rehab of uh, female veterans, a place for them to go to receive the medical attention, the support, the education training, and all that they need to come out and uh, be a uh, working part of the uh, society. Many of them would probably relocate in the Griffin area. The facility would bring uh, a uh, fairly large staff of people to Griffin. And uh, I would just uh, like to speak in support of it. The facility would, is uh, called the Healing Bridge uh, Foundation. The mission statement is to create multi-generation veterans community to support those who have medically and, be, and behavioral challenges that put them at risk or loss of self-sufficiency. The foundation's first community in Griffin, Georgia, Spalding County will provide housing and comprehensive support for uh, our female veterans that are in crisis. Thank you, sir. Is there anybody else on my left that would like to come before the commission? Is there anybody on my right that would like to come before the commission? I guess that's it. I'd like to say something. Ahead, I'd like to echo what uh, Daniel said because I've been in the VA hospital Thank due to injuries, and I can tell you it's bad enough as a male in a male system. <laughs> the women get short shrift and all the PTSD and issues, so I'm happy that the VA has finally. Uh, starting to deal with the female vets. I think it's sad that we have to de-annex to make this happen, but with the funding rules from USDA and all, it, it has to be done. It's for rural only. So, unfortunately, this is a path I think we have to take to make it happen. Any other comments from the board? Uh -huh. Moving on to consent agenda, consider approval minutes for the 2015 annual workshop, as well as minutes for regular scheduled meeting on February 10, 2015. Do we have a motion? I'd make the motion to approve. We have Joanne with a motion. We have a second. Second. Second by Dick. Any discussion and changes? All in favor, signal by raising your hand. 7 0. I want to commend, especially for the morning wor workshop, the details of the minutes of that. That was quite impressive how much we discussed that one day. Moving to the regular scheduled meeting, Yvonne Langford, 245 Merriweather Street, asked to address the commission regarding concerns with the parking changes in the 200 block of Merriweather Street. Dr. Mm -hmm. Brett, did we, did we get both of those minutes? Yeah. We did. Oh, we did, okay. Uh, okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, Dr. Brent Keller with Public Works and Utilities, as well as Ms. Langford. Ms. Langford, please give your name and address for the record, please. Von Langford, 600 South Hill Street. 
Can you pull that mic down just a little? Or, thank you. Will that do? Okay. Yeah. Um, up until a few months ago, this impacts only one block on Meriwether Street. There are two blocks on Meriwether Street that are one way, and this impacts only really just really a half a block on that street. And up until a few months ago, there was parking on both sides of the street. It was parallel parking on both sides of the street. And one day, we were sitting in our building, and we looked out, and they were out there changing the park into angle parking on one side of the street. <coughs> and this has turned out to be very disadvantageous for us. And we've been in this location for 60 years. And a few years ago, more than a few years ago, they changed the traffic on the street from two-way to one-way. And at that time, there was a lot of input from the people that had businesses on the street, and they spent a lot of time doing um, traffic studies and investigating, and there was definitely a need because there were a lot of accidents on that corner. And at that time, they came and personally visited us and talked to us about it. We really didn't want it, but we didn't object to it, and we it, and it turned out. But they, they came and discussed everything with us, and we knew what was happening. With this, they just came out and did it. And I have written three letters and tried to work something out, but it has really not worked. And so I finally wrote a letter and asked for the opportunity to speak to the commission about what was happening. And I asked them to provide me with three things. One was to name the property owner in the 200 block of Meriwether Street that requested this change. The second thing I wanted was copies of the reports and results from the surveys and studies that the city did to justify this change. And the third thing was the summaries of conversations that the city personnel had with all of the property owners to discuss these proposed changes. And until today, I had not received, and I, and I said after this was furnished to me, I would like an opportunity to come and talk to the commission. And until today, nothing was furnished, but I did get a memorandum today <coughs> that was sent, and it, it said that, um, that this was done, it said last fall, Gary Betts contacted the office and talked to Chris Walker about parking issues on Meriwether Street, where he had established a new business and moved in. And, um, and his concerns was that the parking on the north side of Meriwether Street <coughs> and that the curb on that side of the street is extremely high. And if you park there and open the door, your, the bottom of your door will scrape the sidewalk. But we've lived with it like that for 60 years, and it's not been a major issue. You learn not to park quite as close and, and, and do this. And because of that issue, I'm assuming that that is the reason that this parking was changed. But in fact, it really has been a detriment because for, for several reasons. Number one, on our side of the street, we have no, no loading zone anymore, which has created a problem for, the, for our trucks that bring our paper supplies in, UPS, Postal Service, FedEx, all of them. And without exception, every one of those organizations have been in our building and complained about what this has done to them. And we have asked them to please address that with the city, and they say they are not allowed to do that. And um, so I, I'm sure that it's their company policies that they, that they, that they can't, can't do that. But the changes... <coughs> What they did, they took all of the parking from our side of the street and put it across the street so our customers no longer can park. And what, in fact, it did, it has allowed the employees of all those businesses across the street to take those parking places, and they park in those parking places all day long. And the very company that asked that this be changed, their employees park in front of their building all day. 
and the, the, their concern, one of those is a, um, is a tutoring service for children, and the parents were bringing the children there in the afternoon, and they were having difficulty dropping them off because their door scrapes the but if the company had left their parking places open, these people could have pulled in right in front of the building on the other side of the street and unloaded and dropped their children off without their doors scraping the curb. And you have to understand that a half a block away is a free parking lot that those employees have available to them to park all day. And all of our employees park in that parking lot. And before this was changed, the people left our park, left two or three parking places on our side of the street for us and parked in the employees' parking lot. And now, since they've moved all the parking places across the street, they just they don't consider any of those parking places are ours, and they are parking right there all day long and we have no parking for our customers. And um, it, it has created other problems because when, you, when a pickup truck pulls in at an angle there, it's got a long bed on it, and a lot of them have a, a trailer hitch on them. And even the city trucks that come through there, they, the recycling trucks pick up on our street. And, and they're having to go five miles an hour down the street because they can't, because it's such a tight fit. And it, it's just a total disruption. And there have been some other issues, and I, I would like to thank Frank Strickland because um, the Burger King was coming in and unloading in the loading zone, and they were totally blocking the traffic on the street where nobody could get through. And Frank Strickland did come in and... <coughs> And since he has talked to them, we, we find that that's much better. We've had one other issue like that, but I, I do feel like that that is no longer an issue. <coughs> and it, it's, I, we just need it to be put back like it was. Does the board have any questions at this time or comments? Well, it appears like in an effort to solve one problem, we've created another, maybe even worse, but out there with your loading area and dock, anybody that stops there and loads or unloads at your business is going to block the entire street. So obviously it's created a real issue. Right? It, it uh, is because, uh, and I was, I was told in one of my previous conversations just to let them block the traffic. Well, I mean, you know, that's not reasonable. They just said, well, just let them go ahead and park there. That's the way they do it. Project which is owned by the Land Bank Authority, for which the uh, foreclosure of the taxpayers' equity of redemption has not quite run. It runs around the 1st of April. We've also talked to DOT, the Land Bank, to donate that parcel to us, uh, but it, they won't have the power of authority to do so until the 1st of April when that runs out. So uh, I think we're in good shape on both of these parcels going forward with your direction. Go ahead and start the time. So this was a little confusing the way it's written, but what I understand if we approve the resolution as presented, it takes care of all those issues. That's correct. So moved. That motion from Dick. Do we have a second? Second this board. Any discussion? All in favor, say no more raising your hand. Seven zero. Thank you very much. Item twelve, consider purchase of two 2015 Dodge Durango SUV from Aiken Ford Dodge State Contract Vendor in the amount of fifty-eight thousand three hundred forty-four dollars. Twenty-nine one seventy-two each, and equipment installation by Transcom Services in the amount of eight thousand fifty-five. Two feet and we'll adjourn. I think this is interesting that we approved this before, and they couldn't deliver the Fords. It must have been That's so. Correct. We're going to redo it. I move that we approve this purchase as presented again. Second. Motion from Dick, a second from Mr. McCord. No, also the oh, yes, sir. Thank you. And also the budget amendment. We approve it. Concurrently approve the budget amendment. Okay. You agree with that, Mr. McCord? Okay. Any discussion? All in favor, signal raise your hand. 7-0. Thank you very much, Thank you. Item 13, consider the purchase of a 2015 Dodge Journey amount of 
1,039 from Chronic Dodge under state contract for the installation and equipment of the amount of $600 by Transcom Services for the police department using asset forfeiture funds and amend the budget for this and other purposes. Chairman, I move we approve this one with the budget amendment. Also, I uh, salute the chief for using asset forfeiture funds. Second. I recommend that. Second. Uh, Commissioner Morris, second by Commissioner McCord. Any discussion? All in favor, signal raise your hand. Seven zero. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Item 14, consider the approval of phase two of the wayfinding <coughs> sign program to create design by creative sign design signs in the amount of eighty-six thousand two hundred forty dollars for public works of the public works utilities department, Dr. Keller Wardra. I move we approve this. I will second it, but I sure would like to ask some questions if I may. We got a motion uh, by Commissioner Mara and a second by Ms. Ward. Yes. Questions? Go ahead. Um, the color of these signs are going to be like everything else. You, they're not pleasing to the eyes. They're very difficult to read if you're vision impaired, especially the, the rose colors or the light colors. The gold, uh, the gold color. Uh, well, it's not a gold color. It's more like a rose or a pink, and you can't see it. Uh, I know I'm, I'm only going by that sign at Roses, and there's a portion, there's one portion of it you can't read. Uh, and it may be just because of the position of it, but... It's um, growing together piece. I think yes. it's yellow, not pink. It's okay, well, gold. you so see, I'm vision impaired. So I'm telling you right so it, now, But you can't, yes. you can't, <laughs> and I, you I, can't I, make I, it out. I'm seriously... Yeah. Take off your rose-colored glasses, would you? No, dear, I am vision impaired. And I think that if we're going to have wayfaring signs, that we ought to have signs that people can read. And green and that color are not necessarily uh, colors that you can see. I know that goes with all the other signage. Uh, I sure wish we had thought about people with vision problems when we voted on all of this. But uh, if you could somehow tweak the colors so that they're readable. That would be nice. I don't see anything wrong with black and white ones we have now. They they really can be read well. But anyway, uh, that's my problem with the the, the Wayfair and sign and, no, and and the cost of them. I think is atrocious. The gold on white seems to kind of blend. Hey, I'm just the person in charge of making sure they go up. I, had, <laughs> I was not the person that went through I this. That. But you got to make sure you know, we can see them and, and make. So it goes it's back from the constructive criticism I, I agree with social media. Joanne, when we approved this project to the colors, I didn't foresee problems sort of seeing them, but I'm with you. I have a little trouble with too. But yeah. uh, so our budget for this was 86. Is the is 20,000 grant that we're getting for this? On yeah, that's that right. No, that's total on the 20,000 supplemental. Um, and we are in, uh, currently uh, dealing with uh, GDOT. Um, we're going to have to uh, um, alter some of their, the locations of where they want some of these signs. The parking signs will be uh, not a problem on a state route. They'll, some of the, these signs are not going to be on the sidewalk. We're met with, um, with Kenwin today and Chris Walker and when we, I scaled these out for um, Kenwin, they, they actually, where they identified them in this plan, and if we are changing colors, someone needs to let me know. Be, but uh, what the problem is, is those signs are going to have to go in the medians. Um, they will not go where the people did their, supposedly their walkthrough of downtown Griffin, because when you look at the sign, they got to be two feet, six inches back a curb which puts it right in the middle, almost in the middle of the sidewalk. So we're looking at a change. We're going to be meeting with GDOT um, to take a look at putting these signs and met with Kenwin today to put them in the mediums. Uh, there's several issues that we're um, going to work through with GDOT on these because state routes, we do not have not control of their right of way. Do we have a contract with these people? Uh, in other words, we have to fulfill the elements of the contract that we no, I'd have to read it. The, they're the people that were selected, and yeah, with the, for the manufacturing of the signs and the installation. But you can change whatever is necessary. Well, this is what brings up the obvious question. If some of those positions we've identified as part of this 
don't get approved, then we'd have signs that we don't need. So we can reduce the number from this if we aren't sure that. That's what we're going. That's what we went over today. Tomorrow we're making a um, a mock sign uh, out of wood too, because one of the challenges that I've seen uh, now that I'm finding out that we're going to have to look at um, they can't go on the sidewalks. Well, what do they look like in the medians when you've got trees? We've got very nice trees in our medians, so we're in the process of reviewing not only the type of uh, the location, but also the type of sign, and there might be some modifications to the sign after we go through uh, the exercise in the next couple of days. Isn't this premature to vote on this? This is an awful lot of money. It's the parking signs, there's nothing wrong with the parking signs and they're time sensitive for construction purposes because the grant we have to pay, we have to utilize $20,000 and put them in place or they'll take the money back. And so the parking signs are not an issue and we've went through all the locations for that and they will um, be able to qualify for that 20. The other part of it we will be looking at, um, we, we will not cut a, a design loose until we have an opportunity to explore s some options. The last thing we want to do is put a, the total height of that sign is 12 feet and change. And when you, when you look at 12 feet, you're going to be in the drip line and some of the, and some of the, the, the mechanics of putting signs in, obviously, these signs are to move people through Griffin in a very safe and efficient manner. So that we're actually looking at building a mock and seeing what some of the challenges are. The first thing that we'll be looking at, obviously, we'll be talking to DOT of what their regulatory requirements are. And all the signs meet the breakaway mode, and the breakaway is uh, something that has to be done in all state right highways. But we're working on that now. This is time sensitive. If we vote to approve this, you're going to order the parking signs, but you won't order the other. Won't signs order the other work. signs until we um, until I can come up with a solution with Kenwood on what we're going to do to move people through downtown Griffin. Okay. Any other discussion? We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say the letters in here. Seven zero. Thank you, Dr. Out of fifteen, consider approval of task. Order to Burns McDonald for the development of construction documents for the integration of variable frequency drive unit for Steel Branch water treatment plant in the amount of $147,300 and amend the budget accordingly for the Public Works and Utilities Department. Keller, I read through this and I meant to come in and sit down with you before this meeting and I haven't had the time, but what I get in my mind after all this explanation and all this money is that the magnet drives that were spec for this originally were uh, well no I'm sorry they, they, they were the cats meow we you say at the time but they lasted 10 years which in pump time is uh, pretty poor and you mentioned something about an insurance company Yes. involved and I don't know what the insurance coverage is. They weren't struck by a turtle or something. What, what's going on here? Um, they had the, the way our policy is written and we got back the report today um, and we're waiting on the adjuster is that that was not caused by natural conditions when the pump blew and that it looks like they're going to honor the pump and the motor and the rewind of the other motors. So um, we're still going through that motions right now with uh, the adjuster and coal electric. Um, the pump, the magnet drives, um, the reason why we're going to VFD are not performed to the level that ESI assured us they would when we first put them in. Now the pump life to respin, um, magnet drive has stood behind the pumps all this time. They've eaten a lot of money, but um, after looking at what we've got here, we found due to 10 years of technology change, the VFDs can be put in the, in the same facility and move forward from there. So this is another sort of ESI issue. Uh, well, I didn't want to put it on anybody, but okay. these, were re these were the state of the art at the time. So these VFDs are now, they're the new cats me out. It's, supposed it's to not, no, VFDs been around for centuries. I mean, that's what we have at, at our current facilities now is variable drives. 
said the BFD price versus what we've been using. What, what are the other ways? Actually, you're going to go when we finally when when Burns McDonald goes through this motion. Um, actually, the VFD is less than the magnet drive. What is the magnet drive been costing? Or what's the replacement cost to go with the magnet drive? Just, just the drive alone, not including installations, over three hundred thousand dollars. And so we've already gone through three magnet drives. You're saying we've had we better do this for this the third time? No, we haven't had gone through three magnet drives. We've sent these back to the factory, which is in um, in Washington State. For reworks at their expense. Well, I, I shook when I saw the, the price of this contract, but after I read and read and read all the things they got to do to to adapt the space and everything else, I thought, well, maybe it's worth all that money. Well, it's long range too, because what they do is when they do this, they'll also plan for the third the third location with the SCADA and with the electrical control panels when it's all said and done. Currently, the function, how many of the VFDs you have to have in our current situation? We'll have two before this over. Magna Drive is delivering a rebuilt unit um, next week, and we will put that, um, that unit will be installed, and that's the unit that we'll be using until we get this project here. We will not see this come to fruition until about August to September because of lead time on the VFDs. They just don't stick a 1,250-horsepower pump on a shelf somewhere. We have a motion. Yes, I move that we approve this task order. We have a motion, Mr. Morrow. We have a second. Mr. McElmore, a second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Signal us raise your hand. Any against? Seven zero. All right. Consider the approval of purchase Toro Groundmaster 360 turf mower from Jerry Pate Turf in the amount of twenty six thousand one sixty eight point eight three. Off state contract for the City Griffin Municipal Golf Course of the Public Works and Utilities Department. I move we approve. A motion from Ms. Todd. Second. And second, Ms. Ward. Any other questions or comments? All in favor, second and raise your hand. Any against? 7 0. Thank you very much. Consider approval of the purchase of a 2015 F-150 pickup truck from Lois Bitter Speedway Ford for $24,021.88 and surplus existing unit number 865 for the Water and Wastewater Department of the Public Works and Utilities Department. I move that we accomplish that. We do that. We have a motion from Mr. Morris, second from Mr. McCord in discussion. All in favor, stand and raise your hand. 7 0. Thank you very much. Consider approval to purchase of the F-150 pickup truck from Lois Bitter Speedway 4 in the amount of $21,506 and surplus existing unit 1814, the Water Wastewater Department of Public Works and Utilities Department. Do we have a motion? I move that we approve. We have a motion. Dick? Second. Second from Ro is that Rodney. Second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Second on the raise your hand. 7 0. Item 19, consider the purpose of the three. F-350 service truck off state contract from Speedway Ford in the amount of $43,168 and to surplus the existing unit 872 for the Water Wastewater Department of the Public Works Utilities Department. Joanne, you have a motion? I'm going to make a comment for some of our audience that thinks we're spending a lot of money on new trucks, but this one's a good example. What we're replacing has 234,000 miles on it, so <laughs> we're getting a goodie out of it. Need a second. Right, Ryan has a second. Any other discussion? All in favor, signal raise your hand. Seven zero. And we'll get a little bit of money back, won't we? Yeah. I mean, you put me on circle. <laughs> All right, item 20, consider the approval of a, pro a professional service agreement with Hazen and Sawyer for the engineer record of the Sea Griffin Category 1 dams as required by Georgia EPD for the Water Wastewater Department of the Public Works and Utilities Department. I, I move we approve this the whole damn thing. <laughs> I'll second it. I'd like to ask you, this, does this have anything to do with the Solomon Street project? No, ma'am. What this is, um, Jeff Powers des de designed our dam and engineered it at Steel Branch. He went to work for Arcadis. Arcadis is not interested in small business, these small businesses. And so he has moved on, and so we're just...